welcome. Welcome to Vanadium. I'm Chris Rankin. The more I learn about this mad world, the more mysterious it seems. Even though it's one of the most common substances, covering more than 70% of the planet and making up about 60% of the adult human body, water seems almost alien at times. Its behavior should be simple, straightforward, predictable. H2O, with just three atoms, two hydrogen and one oxygen, water acts like a much more complex chemical. Even though its structure is uncomplicated, it acts like something much more intricate. To a material scientist, water is just baffling. For one thing, it actually expands in size when it freezes. In other words, when liquid water is cooled, it contracts as expected, like just about every other substance, until it gets near the freezing point. And then, when it freezes, it expands by almost 10% by volume. It becomes so much less dense that as a solid, it floats on the surface of the liquid. Water is one of just a handful of materials that display this strange behavior. Very cold water can exhibit a liquid-liquid critical point where pure water separates into two distinct liquid forms, like oil and water, but with just water alone. This is just about unheard of to chemists and material scientists. It has dozens of other properties that differ from most liquids as well. It can be superheated and supercooled, leading to dazzling and dangerous effects. Superheated water can explode into a cloud of steam, and supercooled water can turn to ice in a flash. Ice exhibits at least 18 crystal phases or structures, depending on temperature and pressure. And when water is cooled very rapidly or quenched, up to three types of glassy, amorphous ice can form. Water has a very high surface tension, or surface energy, and a very high heat capacity, in other words, the ability to store thermal energy, and both high melting and boiling points. Compared to other liquids and solids, it's incompressible, meaning it won't budge barely a nanometer, even under extreme physical pressure. For this reason, a stream of water can be used to slice right through thick layers of steel using water jet cutting. It's a source of mystery and confusion for chemists and physicists. Yet it's the chemical standard for just about everything. The entire Celsius temperature scale is based on the thermal behavior of water. It actually has two official names, water and oxidane. Most of the water in the universe was actually produced as a byproduct during the formation of stars. And for hundreds of years, scientists argued about where the water on Earth even came from. Until recently, the thinking was that all the world's water was brought in extraterrestrially via comets and asteroids. In the last few years, there's been some doubt about this, and it might turn out that the planet's water was with the Earth since its formation and was locked up in hydrated minerals under the Earth until one day they expanded into oceans. Earth's approximate water volume is 1.386 billion cubic kilometers, or 333 million cubic miles, covering up to 70% of the surface. Small amounts of liquid water are also present on Mars, and Jupiter's moon Europa is thought to contain an entire subsurface ocean. A significant mass of water is also stored in the Earth's crust, mantle, and core. Unlike conventional liquid found on the surface oceans, lakes, and streams, water in this interior exists primarily in hydrated minerals, or as hydrogen bonded to oxygen atoms in anhydrous minerals. Some scientists estimate the total water content of the Earth's mantle to be approximately three times the mass of the planet's oceans. In the same way, the Earth's core could contain four to five oceans worth of hydrogen. In July 2011, there was a discovery of a gigantic cloud of water vapor containing 140 trillion times more water than all of Earth's oceans combined. It was centered around a quasar 12 billion light years from Earth. According to the researchers, the discovery shows that water has been prevalent in the universe for nearly its entire existence. Pure water, all by itself, with nothing dissolved in it, is actually visibly blue due to preferential absorption of red light in the visible range. The water molecule is capable of slightly stretching between the oxygen and hydrogen 
at just the right frequency to absorb red. The blue light can pass right through. This preferential absorption of red light has been demonstrated in hundreds of experiments across the world. Yet, there's still some debate about this online, with some answer websites misclaiming water to be clear and colorless. In nature, the color may also be modified from blue to green due to the presence of suspended solids or algae. Water memory is the purported ability of water to retain a memory of substances previously dissolved in it, even after countless dilutions. It has been claimed to be the mechanism by which homeopathic remedies work after they are diluted to the point that no molecule of the original substance is left in the water. In 1988, Jacques Benaviste submitted his water memory research to the prominent science journal Nature for publication. Nature's editorial board was impressed with the quality of the work and intrigued by the ideas, but also very concerned that the study, if published, would lend credibility to homeopathy. The editor of Nature, John Maddox, stated that our minds were not so much closed as unready to change our whole view of how science is constructed. Rejecting the paper on any objective grounds was deemed unsupportable, as there were no methodological flaws apparent at the time. In the end, the board and Ben Vineste reached a compromise. The paper was published in Nature on the 30th of June, 1988, but it was accompanied by an editorial written by Maddox, noting, there are good and particular reasons why prudent people should, for the time being, suspend judgment. Maddox went on to describe some of the fundamental laws of chemistry and physics which this experiment would violate if it was shown to be true. Mistakes and quackery have found their way into the scientific study of water over the years. The Pemba effect is the name given to the observation that water that starts off hot will freeze more quickly than cold water. Forget the fact that the hot water would need to be chilled to get to the same temperature as the cold water, which would take time. There have been a lot of problems repeating these very interesting results. In my opinion, it might seem faster to freeze water, which had been previously hot, because there are increased bubbles and dissolved minerals, which could act like nucleation sites for the ice to start freezing. It turns out the Pemba effect can be reproduced without heating or boiling and simply stirring the water. Water is commonplace on Earth, but also a common source for inspiration, research, and mystery. It's been considered magical over the years, and probably for good reason. From its controversial origins, to its anomalous thermal expansion, to odd physical properties, to apparent memory, water is just full of surprises. Thank you very much. This was Chris Rankin with Vanadium.